Okay, um, I just wanted to show a quick video of the vacuum chambers I've been building. Um, I have this one and they're made out of the, these are pressure tanks for water and uh, they go bad. And so plumbers replace them all the time. Uh, if you live in the country, it's more prevalent because the, you have well water. And you can see this I don't know, well, well troll or something like that is the this tank there's different kinds and they are designed different so you got to watch what you're doing this if you see there's the weld right here that that's just weld from this to this there's no uh nothing in there however if you look here there's a weld joint here there was one at the top and there's this one with a indentation basically if you see inside here I cut it out. There was a there's a dome that goes right here, um, and it's got a hole in it, and it allows uh, the water to come in and uh, press up against the um, the bladder that's in there, and it keeps it from expanding too much. Anyway, uh, that's a nice feature because it has a, a extra stiff joint there, and then. On this one, it had the same thing, so there's two, I don't know why. But, the so I cut the top off of this one, and then I used, a, you can see there, I used a band off of the another tank and welded it all the way around to give this upper lid, upper joint, um, flange more strength, because I've had one I built like that and it imploded because the, the walls were just too thin and it pulled it in. So whenever you do this, uh, this one I did and I cut it off at one of those bands so it's got more metal there to give it strength. And it works really good. Now this one, you just put the bucket underneath on a flat metal surface or just a flat surface and then you put it on there and hook your vacuum hose up here and draw the vacuum, but you can't see anything. So I wanted to be able to see so what I did, here's a vacuum pump, and then I just welded a, a bracket there or a stub tube there for uh, the vacuum and the um, hose to hook to. And I kind of modified this one a little better. That's when I just JB welded it in there because it wasn't taking a lot of pressure. Then the way you do this, Is you set the, I made it so you set this piece on here, this plexiglass piece. Well, not plexiglass, it's uh, acrylic, I think. Anyway, it was just too small, so I had to weld a, or a glue a, a metal ring on there to fit to allow it to sit on there. Um, then the for the gasket. I've seen several ways to do it, but this is just that, uh, like at the pad that you get for uh, exercise mats. It's it's real squishy, but I was able, this works really good. And what I do is I take and cut it about a quarter or three quarters of an inch bigger than the the lip, so on both sides. Then I put it on there vacuum it and then uh, get an indent and then I uh, use silicone and glue it in there and this works really good it uh, it's cheap those mats are you can probably find them for free I did the same thing on that one there so then on here all you do is you just set your ring on there turn on your vacuum pump and uh, you can seal stuff I'll I'll go through that uh, with you. Okay, on this, um, I'm going to vacuum seal these uh, eggs in the mylar bags. And basically, all I do is I'll, I'll cut off about, leave about a quarter inch on that joint. And then you pick the, like, see this side's kind of wavy? You pick the flattest side and make sure that's down. Then you put that in your bucket. And then you do that on each one of these, and then I'll show you. You can put it in there, and I'll show you the vacuum process. Okay, I got the uh, mylar bags cut, about a quarter inch gap on each side or uh, hole, for it basically forms a 
uh, check valve. But here, this is why I wanted a nice tall vacuum chamber because I can put a, a bucket in there and not have to mess around with stuff inside the chamber. Okay, then you put the top on. Now I'll turn this on for a little bit and watch you kind of see if you can see it uh, backing down, but the the backing pump is loud, so I'm not gonna leave it on that long. I'll just give you an, an idea. So, here we go. So you see the backing is starting to be drawn now. Okay, we're at uh, about 25 and a half inches of uh, vacuum, so we'll stop there. That it, the, this pump is a uh, Harbor Freights and it might be able to blow it down a little longer. It just takes a long time. So now I'm going to release the pressure down here and see if it, if you see anything in here. So there the, the bag's all sealed up pretty good. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you'll get a leaker and you have to do it again. But anyway, that's the the pitfalls of these cutting the edges on there. But they, they kind of flatten out and seal. So that worked pretty good on that one. So <clears throat> I'm going to go seal these up and I'll be done. So here's the bag. Uh, heat sealed the corner. And uh, it's pretty, pretty hard. Um, I did all four. You can also do like uh, <coughs> mason jars. If you want to seal mason jars, you can load that up with mason jars. Just make sure the lid is not on super tight. The ring, make sure it's uh, uh, loose so that it can vacuum, pull the vacuum inside the jar. And then when you take it out, just seal the lid down and check to make sure the little dimple's down. But anyway, uh, <coughs> the these tanks are really the inside you're going to have to cut there's a rubber uh bladder that's in there that has to be cut out and then the bottom is actually a plastic piece and that's the, the water flows in there and to keep it from rusting they put it in that the bottom is uh plastic and then i put two i put a couple of little holes in there because i didn't want the vacuum to draw that up um and you could just got to reach in there. I just used a box cutter and cut that that gasket out. Um, so it's it's really easy to make. It's nice and big, so I can get the five gallon buckets in there. And you can make them smaller. You don't need to have them this big. And you can, if you don't want to watch what's going on, that that design is even easier. You just get a flat piece of metal for the bottom. Uh, you won't be able to see what's going on, but it's. Uh, a lot easier to make because you don't have to build a lid and the reason i used that i just had that uh, stuff from an old radiation monitor and it just was good it's way overkill as far as thickness but uh i didn't have to buy anything so anyway um hope you guys have a blessed day and uh enjoy seeing this thank you bye okay just a quick note on uh, you don't have to have a welder to do this you can just use like JB Weld works really good for that. I'd probably put it on like on the inside and the outside just to give it some stability. And you don't have to have all this stuff on here. You can just go with a tube like that. So that will work fine. And then I just, on this one, I just pull that tube off and release the vacuum. For the uh, ring up here to get some support, uh, if you cut it about an inch, above this weld here it would give you the enough material up here to provide support and that would probably be good that's the way i did that one 
However, if you want to, uh, for a little bit extra support, instead of welding this ring on, what you do is you just cut you, you know, an inch off of your um, material, just grind you, or cut you a ring. This thing is not focus. Just cut you a ring off. Is that thing focus? Uh, cut you like a one inch ring off, put it on the outside, and then you can screw, you know, screw it to it with the bolts or uh, screws just to give it support. And then if there's any holes, just uh, JB weld it or put some silicone on there. So it should be able to be done with like a grinder, a drill, and then just the materials. So it's, it's not that hard to do. It's just uh, a matter of figuring out how to keep, you don't want to cut this lip like here where there's no support because that makes a weak point right at the, uh, at the joint and that will right here. And I had one, it, it pulled in and it pulled in when it was at a deep vacuum. So it was, uh, it was dicey when it did it. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that you don't have to have a welder to do this. Grinders are cheap at Harbor Freight. That's what I use all the time, Harbor Freight grinders. Um, they're like nine, you can get them for 10, 10 or less than 20 bucks, but I think 10 bucks you can get some real cheap ones. And I've had them for years and they haven't failed. So I'm happy with them. And then the cutoff wheels are pretty cheap. So um, anyway, Thank you. I just wanted to show you uh, that you don't need a welder to do this, although I have one and it's really nice to have. But you can use JB Weld for attaching uh, the joints here. I'd probably do it on the inside too, down there where it comes in. Um, you just grind this, grind the top off with a grinder, which those are pretty cheap, like at Harbor Freight. And then for this band here, um, all you do is cut a uh, take the like the, the top part like this here comes off cut you a band out of that like a one inch band and then you could wrap that around it'll have a little bit of a gap right there but that that should be okay and then you could just screw it or bolt it around and then seal those up and that should work that should give you the stiffness and if you put it on the inside that, that's even better because the the vacuum is trying to, to draw this in. It's trying to draw it in so the band would tighten. Um, and you can put one on both inside and outside. So anyway, that's, uh, I just wanted to show that if you don't need a welder, you don't need all the fancy equipment. I hate the YouTube videos that you watch and, oh yeah, you need a lathe for this and blah, blah, blah. But you don't need that for this. You can build it with a pretty, uh, much about with hand tools and uh, grinder. So anyway, thanks, bye.